The first module of the International Space Station was launched into orbit in November 1998. Hundreds of astronauts from 19 different countries have called it home over the last two decades. This massive international partnership demonstrates how much can be accomplished when the world comes together. However, not every country is qualified to participate in the ISS program. To put this into context, the International Space Station ISS, is the world's largest, most remarkable, and best treehouse. It is primarily constructed and run by the United States, has accepted astronauts from 15 different countries, including space newcomers such as South Africa, Brazil, the Netherlands, and Malaysia. But China? China have never taken part in the program. They were officially banned from doing so. Never happened, and it doesn't seem like it's going to happen soon. We're going to take a look at the history of unlikely space collaborations in this video. We're also going to take a look at why the United States lost faith in China's space program, as well as China's potential plans to construct its space station. Let's get into it. Since 2011, when Congress passed a law banning official American interaction with China's space program due to national security concerns, China has been banned from the ISS. Of course, national security is the lingua franca justification for every country to do whatever it damn well pleases, even though it has nothing to do with, you know, national security. But that's okay. The no Chinese law received little coverage in the United States until now, thanks to a CNN interview with the three Chinese astronauts, or talkernauts, who flew China's Shenzhou 10 flight in 2013. The network's visit to China's normally closed space city is a reporting coup, mainly because it shows an entirely familiar, entirely unscary world. Real talker knots doing serious work with serious mission planners, precisely what you'd see behind the scenes at NASA or Russia's Roscosmos. The Chinese crew's stated desire to operate across national boundaries is close to the essence of those other space agencies. Shenzhou 10 commander Nia Haisheng said, As an astronaut, I have a great desire to travel with astronauts from other countries. I'm looking forward to visiting the International Space Station as well. Space is a family affair. Many countries are developing space programs, and China, as a large country, should contribute to this area as well. However, the contribution is not possible on the International Space Station. A study published in 2012 by the US-China Economic and Security Review Commission warning that China's policymakers see space power as one element of a large international rivalry in comprehensive national strength and science and technology, serves as an ex post facto justification for the 2011 law. More ominously, the 2015 study China Dream Space Dream by the University of California, San Diego's Institute on Global Conflict and Cooperation concludes, China's efforts to use its space program to turn itself into a military, economic, and technological force may come at the expense of the United States. Here's how the International Space Station got its start. Space was the final frontier between the United States and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. The space race came to an end when Apollo 11 successfully landed on the moon after political tensions fueled advances in rocket technology. As the Cold War's political environment started to soften, the United States and the Soviet Union collaborated on the Apollo Soyuz program in 1975, a mission that included both nations docking their capsules in space. The mission began in Baikonur, Kazakhstan, with the launch of two cosmonauts aboard the Soyuz 19 capsule. The Apollo spacecraft took off from US soil a few hours later, carrying three astronauts into space and docking with the Soyuz capsule. The first diplomatic handshake in space took place three hours after docking via the hatch of the Soyuz spacecraft. This historic event marked a significant change in the space race, ushering in a new age of international cooperation. Fast forward 23 years, and the International Space Station ISS, is the world's biggest space partnership, and it was about to launch. The space station, which NASA spearheaded, included 15 countries and 5 independent space agencies. Aside from the technological difficulties of designing and launching an entire space station, bringing all of these countries together required a great deal of confidence. NASA was initially worried that Russia would take advantage of the ability to pass advanced technology for military purposes. However, after the Columbia tragedy, NASA had no choice but to rely on Russia to transport astronauts to and from the International Space Station. Despite the need for international cooperation to develop the ISS, China was one of the largest countries not invited to participate. 
The Chinese Space Administration was just five years old at the time, and the rest of the world believed China was clearly not ready to contribute meaningfully to the mission. As a result, China forged ahead with its space program, becoming the only country other than the United States and Russia to send a human into space in 2003. As work on the ISS progressed, China expressed its desire to participate as a new member. However, legislation passed by the US Congress in 2011 effectively ended China's participation in the ISS. A clause known as the Wolf Amendment was included in this bill, which prohibits NASA and US companies from sharing technological advancements with the Chinese government. Even though this would seem to be a cruel judgment, America's mistrust of China was clearly not entirely unfounded. China used an anti-satellite missile to shoot down one of its weather satellites in 2007. This was widely panned due to the large amount of space debris created. A decade later, the US Department of Justice charged two Chinese nationals with allegedly stealing information from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Despite being barred from the International Space Station, China continues to make rapid progress in space. China became the first country to successfully land a spacecraft on the moon's far side in 2019. They launched Taingong-1, a space station, in 2011, and Taingong-2, a space station, in 2016. The Chinese space station will be one-fifth the size of the ISS when it is finished in 2023. According to Google search results, China successfully launching the first module of its space station raised questions about why the country does not simply use the ISS. The central module of China's station, Taingong, or the China Space Station CSS, is the largest spacecraft China has ever built, measuring 54.4 feet long, 13.7 feet wide, and weighing nearly 25 tons. Taingong would eventually take the shape of a T, with the main Tainhe module in the center and laboratory modules docked around it. In the meantime, Russia and the People's Republic of China have agreed to work together to construct a scientific lunar station. The design and lifetime of the spacecraft are still being worked out. Still, there is a complete understanding and collaboration with China, which stands in stark contrast to the two US-centric concerns Roscosmos has raised about the Artemis program and the Lunar Gateway. Roscosmos has a similar collaboration cooperation arrangement with China for the joint Russian-Chinese lunar station. The heads of the Russian and Chinese space agencies have already agreed on the shared integration of launch vehicles and crewed spacecraft. This will enable the Russian or Yol crew vehicle to launch on a Chinese super heavy launcher, as well as the Chinese human spacecraft to launch on a Russian super heavy rocket, both of which will be required to deploy a lunar base. While the United States remains opposed to a Chinese alliance, other space agencies are less adverse to collaborating. The European Space Agency has made it clear that they're willing to allow China access to the International Space Station, and countries like Italy have also agreed to work with China on potential human crewed space flight missions. China has been active in creating its space program, whether they were rightfully removed from the ISS or not. Over the next few decades, they're poised to become an even bigger player within the space community. But at the end of the day, space exploration should bring nations together and most significant successes in space have happened as large groups of people cooperate to accomplish one common goal. What are your views on the matter? Do you believe the International Space Station would be better off if China wasn't involved? Please let us know what you think in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe for more updates. Thanks for watching this video. While you're still here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen right now for more juicy information waiting for you. See you there.